All right, let's take a look at how to set up control rig for the foot and actually the entire leg. And I'm going to kind of show some things here. So if I go to this controller here and click on foot roll and middle mouse drag back and forth, I can see what happens here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of show how to create something like that. And then also I can see that when I lift this up, this is going to be the knee aim. Okay, so those are very important concepts to understand. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like without a character. So this is kind of what the bone structure looks like. And you can see that this is what I'm going to walk us through right now. So I can see that for one, when I lift this up, I can see how the knee auto bends. Um, and then also this, the knee will aim towards that. And then I also have set up, when I click on this, I've got a custom control here that will allow the foot to go like this. Okay, so let's kind of talk about those concepts and um, create this from scratch. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go File, New Scene, Don't Save. I'm going to look at this from the side, okay, and kind of zoom out here. And I'm going to go to Rigging, Skeleton, Create Joints. And then I'm going to click up here. And then I'm going to go, so that's the hip, knee, ankle, ball, and toe. Okay, actually let me, let me just try that one more time, so let's see. There we go. And if I want to change that up at all, I can go like this, display, animation, joint size, and then I can change the joint size here. So if I wanted smaller joints, there we go. Sometimes they're, I feel like they're a little bit too big. Um, and now we have kind of a good start. So first of all, I'm going to talk about how to make the leg bend. So in here, I'm going to go to constraint. And I'm, I want to do a um, an IK constraint. So actually, it's under skeleton. I'm going to go to create IK handle. And I'm going to make sure that this is a rotate plane solver. So what I did was I went to create IK handle options. And then on this, I just want a rotate plane solver. Now I'm going to go from the hip to the heel, skipping just one joint. And I can see that what that allows me to do is bring this up. And I can see how that uh, the knee will auto kind of bend there. So now I want to also have something that will um, have the knee allowed to aim. And I can have any shape, but I'm just going to go ahead and create a locator. So under Create Locator, now I can scale this locator up. And I can put this right where the knee is, okay, like kind of in front of the knee like that. And if I go to Perspective View, I can kind of see what that looks like. Now, if I, um, I just want to take uh, this, and then I'm going to shift select the IK handle, and I'm going to go to constraint pull vector. Okay, now if I lift this up, this is going to aim um, the knee. Okay, that's what I want. Or the, uh, yeah, this will, this will, the knee will point towards this. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. Okay, or I'm going to undo the movement. But I believe I still have, yeah, the pull vector on, which is good. And now um, I need kind of a, a complex way for this leg to move. And I feel like this was one of the most confusing things for me, at least when I was starting, uh, is something called the reverse foot. So let's take a look at this. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to create a couple more IK handles in here. Because what I need is this reverse foot's going to grab onto these IK handles. That might sound confusing now, but go ahead and just kind of watch. So if I go to Skeleton, Create IK Handle, I'm going to go to the Options. And this time, I'm going to change it to a single chain solver. Now, I'm going to go from here to here. And then I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to go to Skeleton, um, IK Handle, make sure that it's a single chain. And then I'm going to go from here to here. Okay. What that did is basically gives me something to grab onto because I can't really grab onto the joint. Um, and then I, 
I can move it and it'll affect the other things. And once again, that, that'll make more sense in a second. So now I have to kind of make a controller for the foot. And I'm going to make that controller with joints. So I'm going to go to create uh, skeleton, create joints. I'm going to start here. This is going to be the heel. So I'm going to kind of come directly down from the ankle right here. Then I'm going to press V as in Victor. And it's going to snap to this one, V as in Victor, V as in Victor. And now that reversed foot, no one's going to see this. In fact, I feel like we could, at the end, we can make it invisible. And it's not kind of like real joints on the body, where it seems like the other joints are kind of more representative of real joints. These are just going to kind of control things um, that we've got going on. So what I'm going to do is I want um, the IK handle of this to be parented to the reverse joint. Now you have to be very careful because when I clicked on this, I could be thinking that I was clicking on the reverse joint, but in fact, I was clicking on the original joint. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go all the way to the top here and select this whole leg right here. And in the channel box, so I want to make sure the channel box is open. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to, um, I could hide it, but I'm just going to template it. I'm going to press T for template. That'll allow me not to select it. Okay. Now I'm going to select this IK handle. And if I select this, I'm actually selecting the joint from the reverse foot. And I know that because that's the only thing that allows me to select. So I'm going to press P as in parent. Now if I select the reverse foot, even selecting the heel, and if I lift this up, I can see that how that's already starting to kind of hold on to the foot there. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this IK handle. Remember that IK handle that we put in there? And I'm going to shift select this joint, and I'm going to press P as in parent. And then I'm going to select this one, and then I'm going to select this and press P as in parent. And now I feel like, now I can see that that all kind of comes along for the ride there. And the other thing that's cool too, is if I select this joint and press the down arrow, I can then rotate this and you can see how it's controlling the original foot. Okay, and that's going to be kind of a crucial element of what we're doing here. So now, maybe I'll go to back to perspective. I can see that this is a good start that we have. I'm going to create a NURBS circle, and I'm going to create this circle like this. And I can have this kind of any shape that I want. And you'll notice sometimes like um, on a rig, there'll be special colors. So like if this is the right leg, usually this will be red, or if it's the left leg, it'll be blue. And the way that I'm going to do that is if I go to the Attribute Editor, I can go to Object Display, Drawing Overrides, enable override, and then color down here. It's in no particular order. I'll go to red. There we go. Now it's a red controller. Okay, excellent. Um, and then maybe I want this one to be red as well. So I could go to object display, drawing overrides. So I feel like it's not very intuitive to where to find that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. Now, um, if I look at this, I'm going to, I want to parent this to this. So I, I believe I select this first, then shift select this, and then press P as in parent. Now if I select the controller, now I can see that when I move the controller up, even if I rotate it, it's still all going to work properly. Okay. One thing that I want to make sure with this controller is that I zero all this out, modify, freeze transformations, and edit, delete by type, history. Make sure that that's nice and clean. I probably should also froze this transformation out prior to adding the um, the pull vector. So you got to be kind of mindful of that. And sometimes if you don't do it in the right order, uh, that can be not good later on. But for this example, I feel like this is fine. So now let's take a look at how to make uh, kind of a custom attribute that is a foot roll for the foot. So to do that, I'm going to select this curve down here. And notice that this is, it says NURB Circle 1. 
I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to call this foot control. And I don't really need any of these uh, to be visible. I'm just going to take all of that. So maybe I want um, to hide selection. Okay, so I could hide selected. Now what I could do is I could go to edit and I'm going to add attribute. And I'm going to call this foot roll. And now for the data type, so basically it's going to say, hey, what kind of data type do you want here? Well, a vector is going to be essentially three numbers, like RGB, like a color value, or XYZ, a location. Integer is going to be a whole number, one, two, three, four, five. String is going to be a an, uh, allow you to type or a list of characters. Float is going to be hold the decimal point, so like 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. Okay, Boolean is yes or no. You can see that this is a Boolean operation right here. And enum is going to be a list of things. Okay, do you want option A, B, or C? So to give us the most control, like I'm going to choose float. I'm going to have a minimum amount of 10, a maximum amount of 5, and this will make more sense in a second, and default is going to be 0. If I hit add, I can see that I added foot roll. If I click on it, middle mouse drag, I can see that it accepts the decimal point because I chose float, and it'll go from 5 to negative 10. Okay, great. So I'm going to put this back to 0, and now I have to kind of set this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it directly from the side, and I have foot roll. So now the key is to go to animation, key, set driven key, set. And in here I'm going to choose load driver. Now load driver is going to be my foot control. So I'm going to say load driver, foot control, the foot roll is going to drive what? Well the first thing I want it to drive is the heel. So I'm going to select the heel of this thing and say load driven. And if I go like this, I can see that this blue line indicates that that's rotate Z. And if I didn't know that I could move it and I can see that it's changing rotate Z right there. So there we go. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to say that foot control, foot roll is going to affect um, joint six rotate Z. Okay, excellent. So now what I'm going to say is when the foot roll is back the farthest, so when the foot roll is at 5, I'm going to take joint 6, or the heel, I'm going to bring it back like that. Okay? And then I'm going to key that. So I foot roll and then rotate Z. There we go. Key that. Then I'm going to say when foot roll is at 0, Joint 6 should be at 0, and I'm going to go ahead and key that. So let's see what we have so far. So if I select this, if I click on foot roll, middle mouse drag, aha, that's a good start. Okay, we still got a little bit to go, so I'm going to put it back to 0. And now I'm going to say the next one um, is going to be, I'm going to deal with this the ball joint right here. So what I'm going to say is at, uh, so I'm going to select this ball joint, I'm going to say load driven, rotate Z, I'm going to say foot roll at zero, the ball joint, whoop, this one, load driven, rotate Z, is going to be there. So when it's at location zero, that's correct. Key that. But if this comes to 5, whoop, I'm sorry, negative 5, then I want the ball joint to be like this, flexed a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and key that. Now, if I click on this, yeah, oh, that's looking good. Okay, so now if I go to negative 5, now I'm going to start dealing with the toe. So I'm going to say 
the toe, this one here. So I'm going to select the heel, press the down key. There we go. Load, driven, rotate Z. So at five, it's going to be right there. I'm going to key that. Now I'm going to say when this is at negative 10, joint 7 is going to be fully flexed, like maybe like that. Key. Great. Now if I select this, okay, excellent. And I could even have that flexed even more. You know, I could, I could just kind of figure out exactly what I want. But now I have this really nice foot roll animation for my character. And once you have kind of a geometry on there, it's going to be a little bit easier. I, I can see that here, this is probably a little extreme that it's, you know, coming back and his foot is extended so much. So maybe I would only have it go back, you know, that far or something. Um, but, and or if I was animating it, I wouldn't even have to go to the extreme. And then you can also see that no matter where his foot is, I can select the aim right here and the knee will follow. I can also go like this, I can bring this up and even if this was at kind of a crazy angle, the foot roll will still work. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you want more videos like this in the future. And all right, cheers.